the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. For if you keep silent at such a time as this, if you keep silence at such a time as this. This morning's reading is a little bit off the beaten path for our normal think readings during the season of Advent. This morning we get the reading from the fourth chapter of the book of Esther. And how many of you have ever read the story of Esther? I'm going to say, at least those who came to the adult Bible study should raise their hands, because we studied it at the adult Bible study this past summer. So, the book of Esther needs a little bit of explanation in, because this isn't a story that you guys know, right? If you, if you want a quick synopsis of the book of Esther, it takes about an hour and a half to watch. It's Veggie Tales. I think it's out there on the shelf. It's called Esther, the, woman, the girl who became queen. It actually is a pretty good synopsis of the book of Esther. But the book of Esther talks about Esther, a, a Jew who is taken into captivity into Susa in Babylon and becomes queen of Babylon because the king gets upset with his former wife because he wouldn't, she wouldn't come when he called. And it's really weird. The other things about this book is that you need to know is it's one of the last books that was ever added to the Hebrew Bible. And there are specific reasons for that, which we'll get to a little bit later. It's good party trivia that everyone should know. All right? But this morning we get Esther, who has now learned that there's been a decree put out by the king's right-hand man, whose name is Haman, because Mordecai, who is Esther's uncle, wouldn't bow down to Haman. So Haman wanted to get rid of Mordecai, and in order to get rid of Mordecai, rather than just get rid of Mordecai, he decided he was going to eradicate the whole Jewish nation. So he went to the king and asked the king to put out a decree that all of those who are Jews should die on this certain date in the future. And this decree was put into place, and it was set out. So every Jew was going to be killed on this specific date in the future. Now think about this for a moment, right? Esther is queen of Babylon. And she is a Jew. The king doesn't know that she's a Jew, though, because they didn't really talk about that that much. So, is Esther going to be safe from this decree? According to what Mordecai says in our reading this morning, that even in the palace you're not going to be safe, right? That's what he said. Do you think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all of the other Jews? For if you keep silent at a time such as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter. But for you and your father's family, you will perish. Right? Mordecai's telling her that if you don't speak up, you're not going to live. You're going to die. Well, the other thing you've got to know is, that Esther said just a little bit before that was that no one was allowed to go to the king unless the king said, I want you to come and see me. If you showed up in the king's palace and in his court without him calling for you, there was one thing that would happen. And what was that one thing? You'd be put to death. So Esther's like, I haven't been called to go see the king in 30 days. And I don't want to go see the king because if I go see the king and he hasn't called me to come see him, he's going to kill me. It makes pretty good sense, right? I mean, if I know I'm going to do something and it's going to wind up getting me dead, I'm probably not going to do that. Right? All the men in the room are going, yeah, right. That's a joke. Right? It's, sometimes we do things that are a little strange. But if you know something's going to harm you, you're not going to do it. So Esther's like, I don't want to go see the king. I don't want to do that. But Mordecai says, you have to. You have to go see the king. And that's why I think this is actually a perfect reading for Advent. Because what are we waiting on? Santa Claus. <laughs> Which is kind of true. St. Nick's already been here though, right? We're waiting for Jesus to come to us as what? A baby in a manger. Let's think about this for just a moment. How ridiculous is it that God sends the Savior of the world to lay in a feeding trough? How ridiculous is it 
that that same baby then becomes a prophet who walks around Jerusalem and tells people that they should love others up and above holding on to religious doctrine. And how ridiculous is it that that baby goes from laying in a manger in a feeding trough to hanging on a cross so that each and every one of us can have a relationship with God. That's not the way any of us would fashion about the way that God should send the Savior of the world to come and be here with us. That's the reason that this book resides in the Hebrew Scriptures. There's some, the reasons I told you earlier why this book is... is it was the, one of the last books to be added. There's some reasons for that. And one of them is very particular. Does anybody from the Bible study remember? Because it's a very interesting, and this really is your, your party trivia. The book of Esther, in all of its chapters, talking about the Jews coming to be captive in Babylon, and then this Jewish woman becoming queen, and how this Jewish woman then risks her life going to the king to save her people, which she ultimately does... But it never mentions at one point in the whole of the book the word God or prayer. This morning's reading talks about how when Esther gets the, the comeback from Mordecai who says, if you don't do this, the help for the Jews will rise from some other place. But as for you and your family, they will perish. But maybe, just maybe, you were brought into this position of power of being the queen for this particular reason. Maybe God placed you here at this point in time. Well, he didn't say that. Maybe you were placed here at this point in time so that you could do what needed to be done. And then Esther responds to him and says, well, go ahead and gather all the Jews and, and fast for me. And me and my attendants will also fast. And three days after that, then I will go to the king. And, and if I die, I die. But I will go to the king and state my case. And even at that, when you fast, what do you usually do when you fast? You pray. She didn't say to pray. She just said to fast. In all of this book, in the whole story, it doesn't mention the name or the word God at all. And it doesn't talk about prayer at all. It's all about a story about how we live our lives and things happen and things come. And we're put in positions and places and, and specific times to do things for everyone around us. You see, that's why this is important for us to know during this time. Because what's happening out there in the world? Everybody is going after the newest, what, iWatch or iPhone or the latest gadget that you can get. And we have to get the best present and we have to do the right thing in order to, to, to make the people happy, right? We've got to do the right thing in order to impress the right people. Is that really what Advent or Christmas is all about? There's no present in the world that any of us could ever get that is going to beat the, the ridiculousness of the baby in the manger that's coming in a few weeks. We could go completely without presents for Christmas. And you would still get the best thing as my daughter glares at me. <laughs> we could completely go without presents for Christmas because we've all already been given the best present we could ever get. And some of us have to speak up about that. And we have to change the way the world is acting. And we have to do that. Not because we're the only ones that can, but because God has placed us into the place at this particular time to do the things that need to be done. Just like he did with Esther. For such a time as this, you have been placed where you are to do what God has called you to do. And what is that? What? Talk to the king. Talk to Jesus. Ask him what he needs for you to do. Be present in other people's lives and show them the love that, you, that God has for them. Be present in other people's lives and show them the love that God has for them. Give to others rather than wanting to get for yourself. Show the love that God has given to you because I guarantee you when you get rid of the love that God has given to you that God's not going to surprise you. He is going to fill that right back up completely so that you can just give that right back out again. Because that's what we're called to do. And that's what we're called to be. <clears throat> Two candles. The first one is for hope. And the second one is for peace. That's what we are in the world. You are 
the hope of Christ, the hands and feet of our Savior, walking and moving in your places of life. And you can bring his peace by helping others see the love that he has for them. So do what God has called you to do and be in the places that you need to be, knowing that no matter what happens, he's always going to be there with you and he's always going to move with you through this world and wait for that ridiculousness of that baby in the manger because that is the best gift that any of us could ever receive.